Hello and welcome back to Pillars, and uh, we are in the Takano estate I just entered. You must be careful when sparring. See the scratches on the wood? This is the last house in the royal district, serpent district that we kind of checking out. This is actually stealing, so I need to be a little bit careful. Real quiet. So, who is this Takano guy? An older Mataru man stands ringed by younger Huana, apprentices or pupils it seems, his robes shimmer with quartz uh, beating uh, and his perfume annou announces his presence from across the room. Damn. Always on the perfume. <clears throat> Yet beneath his finery he looks like a fighter uh, gone to seed. Disused muscles flop from his arms and flap pads him like us like so many layers of silk he looks up and notices you greetings and welcome to my home he gestures to the lavish room puffing his broad chest out a little more for what do you come to my villa uh, beaming he spreads his arms wide show him the cornet of depths look I have a special shell too <laughs> oh yeah this is the guy we need to take the shell from Ah, I see. His features fall in disappointment. I am sure it is also a great honor. Read Takano's soul? Let's do it. Your essence slips from your body and Takano's soul enfolds yours like a warm, oily tang. As his fears and questions seep into you, you prepare your perspective shifts to his. At first, you worried this pale elf before you had been sent by the Valian debt collectors. It would be a low trick, taking advantage of your famous hospitality, but then those Valians are crafty. Perhaps if your villa were bigger, then they might uh, know you're a man worthy of respect. Ugh, oh, really? At least you have uh, the shell. You tuck it away not only for safekeeping, but also because you are a little ashamed of it. How could such a simple, ugly thing be sacred to a god? But it was a gift from the queen, and so you keep it. Your gaze strays to the wall. Yes, you must knock down that section there. Install a wide, grand window once you have the money. You retreat from Takano's soul to find him watching you with a placid smile. Are you, here you have a rare Andret, uh, artifact? The Cornet of Waves. It is a conch shell, but very important. To receive it is the highest honor. I have one too. He nods vigorously, jiggling the loose flesh of his neck. He sounds like he's trying to convince himself more than you. The Queen gave it to me as thanks for my years of service. I was her personal bodyguard when she was a child, you know. He folds his hands over his considerable pouch. Why is the corner of the wave so special? Because it is sacred to the goddess Andra. Everyone knows it is a privilege to have. He clasps uh, his uh, interlaced fingers together. His knuckles glowing white. Uh, he glances towards his apprentices. Akara Takano. Everyone knows it is a sign of favor. No one asks you. She snaps to, her response as sudden and automatic as uh, though Takano had just given her an order. He gives the apprentice an appreciative nod. Such artifacts often imbued with powerful spells. Take care when handling it. So I can use Arcana, Religion, History, but I ha also have to be an Omana. From the Deadfire Archipelago. Okay, let's use uh, Arcana. So, you sure you know how to handle it? I keep it locked away. To see, and not to touch, Ikera. But your words are good warning. He glances nervously around his fine home. Generations ago, there was a similar shell. When the old city sank, Andra's faithful gathered around that cornet and prayed for deliverance. 
He leans close, a storyteller's grin spreading across his face. An ominous sing song uh, creeps into his voice. But Andra is not a goddess of mercies. Instead of lifting them from the ruin, she pulled them down with the shell and said they would rise when it did. Oh. He chuckles and leans back, clasping his hands over his generous midsection. That is the story, anyway. Macabre, no? I need the core with the waves. Cornet, yeah. But it was a gift from the queen. Yeah. It is unusual for a man of my standing to give such a thing away. Damn. I can't bluff. <laughs> Consider the trade for your life? I need to get better with bluffing. The Cornet of Waves is no mere trophy. It deserves a keeper who knows its history. But the queen gave it to me. There, there is great honor in such a gift. The Andra punishes those who refuse to let go. If you cling to her relic, imagine what she might take instead. That's such a, a weird logic. Let's try it. Far be it from me to offend a goddess, especially when I have much else to steward. He looks around at the spacious villa. His nervous expression is reflected in the mirror. Smooth marble. Take it. With my blessing. Really? You are one dumb guy. He presents you with a large, uh, lustrous conch shell. The surface is inscribed with symbols and the tip is fitted with a silver mouthpiece. Thanks for that. Uh, I'll finish looting your house. Then leaving. Keeping an eye out. What do you think about that? Oh. What for, Cap? Allow me. Easily done. As you wish. Okay, we'll just sneak up upstairs. I don't be supposed to opt in sparkling. Leave it. Yeah. He clearly has nothing. And how do you have so many guards? I mean like this is not this is a good place, I suppose. You have a lot of big rooms with no doors. But like, is this really a space good enough for like 15 guys? I don't know. You do you, I guess. Anyhow, uh, now we either go to the queen, or we go and burn uh, that weird lady's body. And actually, we have a lot, lot of things to do anyway, so might as well just go to the palace. It's time. I don't know if it's just gonna end up in a bloodbath. Hopefully not. We probably have to make uh, friends with somebody, right? Your queen is too stubborn. Barati pays coin to feed <laughs> the You songwriters need a guild if you hope to learn discipline. Yeah, but not so. You can you never trust the leadership the if they have a bigger... Let's see, you know, in a system like this, the if the leader has a bigger house uh, than the subjects... Hey, well, I calling them subjects, they shouldn't be <laughs> uh, considered inferior in any way. Uh, then you can right away say like, oh, well, there you have, there you have it, corruption. <laughs> Kahunga Palace. Barati. He smells one touched by the great eel, does Barati. A sizable Almana tilts his head up and uh, looks down his nose at you, flaring his nostrils with hungry interest. You are a woman who sits across a fire with death. Akira? Um, 
the Pallid Knight and I are on f familiar terms. Uh, Pallid Knight is Berat. He nods, clasping his hands with a quiet delight. For glutting mighty Tangaloa and hurling foes into their next life, Berati can offer payment. Coins for feeding hungry gods. More Akira. bounties? You collect bounties? Rewarding those who appease the great eel. This is Barati's cause. May the beasts of the dreaming lands never know famine. Barati inclines his head and touches his brow, holding the pose with deep reverence. What bounties do you have? Tangaloa rolls a hungry eye toward Dichila. A Valian captain who scouts for Luminous Adra in sacred lands. Brati squeezes his knuckles until they are bone white. I'll take the bounty. Tangaloa knew it would be so. Dechila sails her voyager Elysio around the waters south of Nikitaka. The great eel hungers for her soul. Got it. Where's the queen? She's not here. Rooftop. Palace. Palace. What's in here? Why do you guys let me in any, every sure. single place? That's just dumb. Guards, you're doing a terrible job. Fine saber. Exceptional large shield. Leave it to me. Okay, so let's check out the roof too. Roof rooftop. That's probably not not where the queen is. And we can go deeper into the palace as well. A lot of people are here. What is this? Motes of light dart through the winding streams of water like schools of fish. Queen probably sometimes is here, but not right now. Where the hell are you, Queen? I need to murder you. Oh. Stray cat? Gerwait, Calder. You find a young man with long blonde hair uh, drawn back in a simple club. His clothes are spare but well tailored, and his armor, a fine brigantine in blue and silver, is polished to a shine. He leans casually to one side, a clean hand on his hip, and sighs, bored. His eyes light up when he sees you. Hello there! Come to have a word? I don't bite, I promise. You sure about that? I don't know, that's just a weird thing to say. Yes? Who are you? Gladly, my friend. Gladly. And how kind of you to ask. That was a perfectly waste of a good introduction. You could have just said like, hey, I'm actually this person. Instead, you just went with pointless pleasantries. He clears his throat with a theatrical wave of his hand. I am the youngest son of a noble house. Now, don't make that face. Poor, desperate fool, you must be thinking. Well, waste not your sympathies on me. Youngest son of a noble house? Sounds like a kick-ass uh, position. You have all the money with and none of the responsibility. Truly, I consider it a boon rather than a punishment. All the comfort and none of the responsibility. What's not to like about that? Like, Calder... Like, by the way, this is my first time talking with him. Like, it wasn't really that hard to figure it out. What are you doing in the dead fire then? What else brings faraway travelers to the archipelago? Adventure! I've nursed a great love for heroic tales since my boyhood. What? As I was loafing about my father's estate, I thought, Well, Gervard, isn't it time you made a name for yourself as well? So you got bored being rich. So here I am. And though I dare say I'm little use in a fist fight, 
I can do a fair bit of magic and draw a lovely map, so I've taken to charting the interior wilderness of the Deadfire's larger islands. Great. That sounds dangerous in its own right. Ah, but it's worth it for the stories I'll one day have to tell. Oh, I cannot wait. But truly, if I could only inspire others as I myself have been inspired by those old tales, why, it would be marvelous. This is truly marvelous. Anyway, enough of my prattling. Surely you've other things to do. Can you teach me what you've learned in your adventures for free? Oh, it would be my absolute pleasure. Uh, for a price, of course. 3,000 copper? Why? That's a lot of money, man. What happened to Mr. Rich Guy who wants to wants a good story? I don't think so. Well, I'll be here if you change your mind. <sighs> Screw you, man. <laughs> Serpent crown. Oh, okay, upper floor. Here we go. So we can go deeper into the Kahanga Palace. So, where is the queen? She was not on the rooftop. She was not in her... I don't know if that was a main chamber where she... ...accepts guests. But, like, seriously, when you, like, actually think about it, when it really comes down to it, like, if in any society, the leader, quote-unquote, has a castle, like, that's kind of a dead giveaway right there. Nope. While I am flattered by the esteemed Hazanui's confidence, I must wonder how my people are meant to have destroyed an entire colony overnight. The Valiant dig Dignitary aims a withering look at across the aisle. A middle-aged woman with a square jaw and torn stained teeth meets it. You tell us. It's no coincidence that your outpost at Port Maje survived the recent storm. She pulls a slender pipe from her pocket, but at a look from the queen's attendants, she puts it away. You speak as if I could command the tides. While you are casting your blame in a wide net, why not look to our Kahanga allies? We do not share their talent for shaping water. <sighs> A sizable Oman standing by the throne takes a bold step forward and flares his nostrils at the assembled dignitaries. A hush falls over the room. I say our guest forgets himself. He clears his throat and sweeps his gaze from Nero to the rest of the room. Brother, stand down. Queen Won Kaza. Two. Up to this point, the queen has studied the proceedings with an even expression. She half rises from her throne as she fixates on Prince Arihi. You are the one who mistakes my throne room for a sparring arena. I say this is beneath us. As Arihi lowers his head, the queen slowly centers her gaze on you and leaves it there. An interesting visitor in difficult times. You cannot be here to deliver a favorable omen. Though her mouth doesn't move, Wankaza voice uh, comes to you like an insistent memory nestled among your surface thoughts. Note to Wankaza, shake your head, shrug. What? Did you say something? Say nothing? Shake my head is what? Honest. Not to Wankaza. Is shrugging rational? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess. That's just not to her for now. Allow me to apologize as I toss you before the wolves. Though she turns to be to the dignitaries, you feel her attention on you. This one is a watcher blessed by Tangaloa. 
I suspect that many of our questions about Hasongo will soon be answered. What? I'm gonna answer it? Sorry, what's a Hasongo? One of our busiest ports. Much of the food we send to Rawatai passes through Hasongo. She glovers, fidgeting for her pipe again. However, the frown that troubles her features suggests that there is something else of importance at Hasongo, something she has chosen not to reveal. I take it from your question that you are not here to enlighten us about Hasongo. I literally asked what is a Hasongo 30 seconds ago. If it pleases the court, I journey from the crippled port Maya. No, please. I'm not gonna be one of those guys who are not gonna talk properly. The damage to your colonies was the work of the gods. That's pretty passionate. I come with a warning for the queen. How did you wanna know I'm watcher? Take stock of your audience? Ah, oh, I don't know. The damage to your colonies was the work of the gods. That sounds perfect. Courtiers cast anxious and amused glances from you to the queen upon her throne. Nero seems especially confused. Hazanui Karu, however, regards you with a cold appraisal. What is this? Valian blood still stains the floors of our offices, and yet this woman <laughs> walks freely into the palace? <laughs> Come on! Just because I killed like a family, and also one of the guy. Okay. Probably I shouldn't list it all, but you know, it, they they were all accidents. I just entered someone's home, and they were beyond rude to me. Like, how would you react? Raising her hand for silence, Wang Kaza looks uh, to her brother. He approaches, and they exchange a few words, too quiet to hear. She lifts her gaze to you once more. We assembled to discuss the darkening of Hasongo, one of Rawatai's colonies. Watcher, it seems you have the floor. Oh, I'm gonna win over the crowd. Port Maya suffered similar damage when Eltas passed through. It's possible that Eltas only paused at Hasongo on his way to parts unknown. That's speculation. We must do something before Eltas tramples yet another settlement. Forget Hasongo, I seek the giant who crossed these waters. <sighs> we must do something before Elta tramples yet another settlement. Yeah, we shouldn't be concerned about what happened. We need to consider ourselves with what next. What's next? Huh, what sailor's tale is this? You shut your mouth, ha Hazanui Karu. There's no sane explanation for what's been happening. We keep waiting for one, it'll be too late. Does tilling the soils of the Eastern Reach drive all men mad? You sound as crazy as the Dawnstar Dreamers. She looks at Eddard the way one would look at an especially rabid but fascinating animal. Have you not heard the rumors, Karu? An Adra Colossus marching across the sea. Sailor tales, but credible ones. Nero crosses his arms, looking distinctively uncomfortable. I am acquainted with the Watcher of Cadnoir from my assignments in Defiance Bay and Twin Elms. Palagina! Long time no see! Tiverus? It explains the colorful nature of your reports. I have seen things with her that are not even told in the most outlandish of sailors' tales. And I'm supposed to take two Valians at their word? She gestures between Nero and Palagina. How came a watcher from half the world away to be involved in these happenings? Enlighten the court. Brad herself sent me to track down Iotas. Everyone is in danger while Iotas walks, I must do something. Iotas emerged from beneath Kaidnua, my castle. He made this personal. I'm here against my will. Anyone still listening is free to help me or stay out of my way. <laughs> well, Eata submerged from beneath Kadnua, my castle. He made this personal. Silence descends on the hall. Courtiers and delegates eye one another, seemingly uh, 
gorging, uh, which of them will be first to laugh? A stern look from Queen Wankaza turns every questioning glance to stone. Tracking down a god who stands as tall as a mountain, a fisherman with poor eyesight could do this. My priests will trip over their feet to interpret his divine plan. Watcher, can you cut through the din and tell for what he comes to the dead fire? Death, death, and more death. And, uh, this, well, getting some luminous Adra. Yes, I plan on using other pillars to track and ultimately confront Eotas. I need to find him. First to die trying, again. Whatever Eotas is here to accomplish, I'll get the truth out of him. Wow! The gods are no mystery to me. Eotas will answer for his action. No, no, no. Yeah, I'll track him using Aedra Pillars. How resourceful of you. The Isles are studded with enough luminous Adra to bankroll an economy. She turns a quiet glance in Nero's direction. I believe our course is clear. We will send the Watcher to Hisongo. What? You're not sending me to anywhere. How did you come to this conclusion? I said I want to catch Yotas, not... Check the last place he destroyed. For you guys. Wankaza spreads her hands, calm, uh, calmly assured of her reasoning. Set sail to the west of Nekataka. I would tell you to keep a weather eye out for a lighthouse, but the God of Light did not appreciate competition. Something to add, Hazanui? You have an eager look about you. She believes herself entitled to my ear, I say. Wankaza... Gaze wanders back to you only briefly. Ah, oh, she must be a cipher? Only that Hasongo is a Rawatayan outpost. It would be useful for the Watcher to take one of ours along. She inclines her chin at another woman standing nearby. Ma'am. Who are you? Composed Almana standing at attention, and her furrowed brow cleaving down otherwise warm features. By her feet, a colorful bird uh, preens itself without concern. Maya's an expert sailor and a better sharpshooter. The best the Brass Citadel has to offer. She looks you in the eye and gives you a slow nod. Whatever comes your way, she'll see it first. If it gets me and Ashiza out of diplomat duty, we'd set sail with a drunk scolder at the helm. Uh, Maya signs with resignation and not just her bird affectionately with her toe and shut us out entirely we have every right to know of any hazards in these waters palatina go with the watcher see that the republics are served in this investigation nero turns to the godlike warrior standing off to the side ah your excellency palatina's golden eyes flash in your direction but her face betrays no hint of emotion. That will be enough parading of champions for now. I'm certain that our guest knows how to assemble a crew. I'll take Maya. Always good to have a rifle on hand. Palagina, welcome on board. Your sword is needed. Can I can I take both? I need all the help I can get. Seriously, I, I don't wanna leave any followers behind. Akira? If you can stand the chattering of unlike minds on your ship, that is your prerogative. One Kaza blinks with amusement as she takes note of the uh, look of uh, that Maya and Palagina exchange. Oh, good thing I'm already accustomed to cramped quarters and temperamental birds. She winks at Palagina. Seraphim's eyes close as she nods along. Sodding nibbles on her lips. To hide a spreading smile. We both have our orders. I have no interest in interfering with you as long as you do not interfere with me. I believe we are finished here. Are we here? Queen Wankaza rises from her throne, and the surrounding guards stand at immediate attention. Aren't we popular? Take care at Hasongo. The dead fire was overfull before Aethus blundered in. One cast nods to you as she adjourns. And take care with your trading company spies. She glances at Maya and Palagina. I say it is beyond time our guests lick their wounds somewhere else. What the hell? Shut the fuck up! He banishes the foreign dignitaries 
with a swift and unmistakably disgusted wave. What? Let's Are we... Speak. Ranger Rogue. Just Ranger. I don't know if I want the Rogue. Ranger Wizard. We already have a Wizard. Let's just make Maya a Ranger. And Paladin is gonna be a Paladin. Or Paladin Fighter. I don't know. Paladin Chanter? Uh, I don't know. Should she be a, a Paladin Fighter? We already have a full fighter, so... Maybe we're just gonna go with a full Paladin. I don't know if I wanna... Kick anybody right now. Hey! Watcher! Go away! I don't wanna kick Yudvin. Seraphim is cool. Soda is cool. Ether is cool. Everybody's cool here. I like everybody here. Elat is actually somewhat boring. Constantin, pretty damn boring. The Kehu? I don't know, I don't care for him that much. I like druids though, uh, quite a bit. I did consider making a main character a druid. I probably had the, the best experience with a druid as a main character in Path of Exile 1. Palagina, she seemed to not care me for that much. And Ranger, but we seem to have a pretty good uh, variety of characters right now. But it sucks so hard that we can only take five. Oh, I don't know. Let's accept Watcher, it. While we have the chance. While we have the chance. Okay, let's check out the throne room. Also, I want to talk with the queen about the food situation. That's that's what I wanted. Granis Yirgar. So, we probably should have just uh, came up here uh, in the first place. You meet a tall, brown-haired man dressed in full plate mail. That might not normally catch your eye, but his uh, mail is unusual. Colored a deep green and emblazoned with the image of a golden tree. And on the pommel of his sword, he watches the crowd go by with keen eyes. Relaxed yet fully alert, he narrows his eyes when he spots you. What do you need of me? Oh, that's not the voice I expected. <clears throat> he looks at you warily, as if he is deciding whether you are a snake that might bite. Well? Who are you? He's initially hesitant, unsure if your intent. Eyes narrowed, he sizes you up, then nods. Interesting armor you have there. Can I murder you for it? I suppose it is. Are you familiar with the shield bearers of Saint Elka? We are a paladin order. Yeah, I kind of know about them a little bit. Word of our order travels far then. Good. He clears his throat dramatically. I am the son of a disgraced noble family. <laughs> My father and brothers were executed for treason when I was a boy. Rightfully so, I must add. And My mother, sister and I were thrown out on the street. Sounds great. All we had to our names was a trunk full of heirlooms. One of them was this suit of armor, which belonged to my eldest brother. Now I endeavor to live up to its promise and redeem my family's honor. That's the long and short of it, really. Can you teach me what you learned as a member of the Shield Bearers? Well, you would need to become a Shield Bearer yourself to really learn it all. I don't care! I suppose I can teach you a thing or two as we stand here. The privilege will run you 3,000 copper, however. I don't think so! As you like. Why all of them cut 300... 300... well, 3,000 copper. Well, uh, okay, Goodbye. I guess, I guess that's it. Wait, is that stealing? No. Hunga Palace, upper floor? Maybe we should check that out. Serpent Crown? A tapu? And who are you? Cartographer bites his uh, thumbnail and mutters to himself. That's it. Why not? All right. Can we actually go outside? Oh. 
Oh, no, no. We need to go back to the queen and talk about the food shortage situation. What? Where is she? Your coming is a favorable omen already. The prince nods and crosses his arms, a self-satisfied smile on his lips. How's that? Religion, mystic, scholar. You happen by a time when our rivals bicker and tear at each other's throats. Right. <laughs> it does not take a priest to see how the gods send us an outsider to dig under the skin of our enemies. Arihi chuckles to himself and nods. Bow. Honored to meet you, sir. Just kidding. You never know, it could be a bad omen. Bad to outsiders, I say. Anyone who can empty this hall of dignitaries is a friend to the Juana. I will not paddle around the island. My sister wants to know if you are as useful as you are disruptive. She trusts me to judge this. Okay, that settles it. Anyone who trusts you to do a damn thing is either evil or incompetent. You did not come this far to serve the crown, I say. But sailing is an expensive hobby. Loyal service can keep your galley stocked. Have... Have any problems with loyalty lately? Naked. But that's not what I wanna read. There's a city of friends, I say. We exchange so much between districts. Yeah, that's bullshit. Can I just lead back... Lead that back to the gullet? His smile tightens into a hard line. Even my sister's advisors dine at the officer's lounge and indulge at the wild mare. Arihi grimaces and looks away. And she tolerates this? Onikaza has a grasp on diplomacy that is beyond her impulsive protective brother. You will see how much she overlooks in the name of peace. Here in Serpent's Crown, I can guarantee safety. But cavorting with outsiders, Akira, that is open water. He opens his palms and sighs. A helpful warning, Harold of Bereth, from one friend to another. I could use some extra coin, by the way. Ikera, to patch a hull or stitch a sail is costly when supplies come from distant islands. Yeah, give me money. The city has honest work for those in need, I say, and insists that everyone carry a heavy purse. That's not what I want. I know that you can get money, I'm saying, you give me money right now. May I speak with the queen? I am Onikaza's shield. For a time, let it suffice that we speak with the same authority. Well, you certainly like to believe that. Enjoy your stay in Nikitaka. A little crestfallen, the prince still manages a cordial smile and nod. What the hell? We need to leave. Unbelievable. I wanted to talk about the issue with the food. And now I'm sent to Kamehame Island to check out what what Eotas did there. Uh, spoiler, he's probably going to have a, some footprints there and he's not there anymore. So chasing him will not give me get me any closer. Hmm. Means birth. Yeah, we can burn the woman here. Sacred stair. Temple of Magran. No. Okay, let's go there. We need to go to Temple of Magran and uh, burn her body of that woman. That we found. Yeah, I would like to be more specific, but like, I'm not gonna remember the name of uh, the people I just uh, met once. Uh, she's something with the M. But I probably shouldn't uh, say something and uh, say wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Also, they have weird names. Actually, the, queen, the queen's name is uh, somewhat easy to remember. Wonkaza. 
so I guess we know that. Seems like the prince doesn't really care about uh, uh, being fair, but he definitely likes privilege and likes to think that he's uh, just as good as the queen. So, what's that? <clears throat> Game, you want to load anytime soon? <laughs> I'm thinking like what kind of missions we have because we have so many. We have so many missions in our journal that I don't even know where to start. And we also need to still go outside and run around the island. But we're probably gonna get to the point where we... Uh, oh, we actually inside. So we have all these missions we can do. A lot of bounty missions, but also a lot of missions that are specific uh, to a location. And actually I need to like probably get better at being a pirate, I guess. Did we even use any uh, supplies when we were docked in Nakataka? I don't know that. Well, I have a ship full of sailors who are ready for action. But uh, they're actually seeing none of it. So Temple of Gone. Let's you souls, I. Mind if I be asking how? Faith can do many a thing, Seraphin. Add a little copper and Audra, and a normal lantern can work miracles. Right. I don't know. Don't those be the tools of the Animancers, Art? Maybe. But I'm no Animancer, that's for sure. I ain't out to play God. Only serve mine. Okay. So, High Priest Hati. Oh, you want to burn? obstacle is a challenge we must answer. These are whetstones that sharpen us into fine blades. Muhai has passed. I'd like to commit her body to the flames. Muhai? Yeah! The priest calm's, uh, priest calm demeanor is shattered by his hissed utterance. He glances around you both. Muhai has broken with Wahana. The queen has forbade that any should have contact with her. Akira? She would be banished to the Undercity if not for her sickness. And now that has finished her. Uh, what does that mean? Sounds like you are very obedient for a uh, priest of Magran. I don't care about your customs. I need her spirit to leave me alone. Why spirit troubles you? A punishment was hers alone to bear. A group of the Wapua came to seek Muhai's counsel, for she was known as a great navigator. Muhai was of the Oweki before she came to Nekataka. The Oweki and Wapua were enemies for many years. Before Queen Onikaza's time. Aweki and Wapua. wonder how I don't remember all these names. The Muhai misled the hunting party, and they were lost. All of us are Kahanga now. To harm Wapua is to harm Aweki. As Muhai turned her back upon her kin, so we were commanded to turn ours upon her. The Queen would have us join our tribes into one raised fist. She could not let Muhai's crime stand. So it was a political decision. I don't have enough resolve or diplomacy. Priest of Magran. I say it was done for the good of our people. The traitors, they make war upon themselves. Each dousing another's flame, they are reduced to embers. She died alone, isn't that enough? So too did she act on her own, against her own people. She does not deserve the honor of walking with the gods. The gods are nothing but trouble. There's no honor to be had. It is said that you are sworn to Rakuhu, to Berath. <laughs> Do they speak false? This is dangerous talk. Uh-oh. Come. Give me the body. I will bury her beyond the great city walls. It is the best that I can do. I will do as she asks and burn the body. You would defy the word of our queen? The priest looks down at you, his lined face twisting into a solemn frown. 
Dump the body in the fire. <laughs> That's shady. <laughs> Can she not redeem herself? Muai is dead. She has lost her final battle. Who says one's chance for redemption ends with death? For some, it's only the beginning. Come. Give me the body. I will bury her beyond the great city. Is there no other way? You are not of the Kahanga tribe. For what do you do this? Your, prom your spirit promised me a reward. Akira, outsider, have you no shame? <laughs> Selfishness sealed her fate. It will do the same for you. Fine. Do I really want to make a scene with burning uh, some woman that I don't care about? Fine, take her. I will do as promised. Thank you, outsider. The Wapua have their justice. Oh. I hear your talk. Who has turned your heart against me? The priest? Has he forgotten who we were? Never before would a member of the Awiki have been left to die alone. Hey, I didn't turn against you. I never cared about you, Muhai. I upheld my tribe's honor, and for that I was abandoned. Left to waste away, to hobble around my home with only maps for company. Now I will be buried like a secret. Never to know Magrin's favor. You're a navigator, you'll figure it out. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry, Muhai. Magrin never cared for any of us. You find your own way from here. Is that cruel? I think that's more... I think that's less cruel than your navigator. You'll figure it out. A curse upon you, Watcher. May your life's path curve upon itself. May you lose your way on the wheel. That's very rude. Her last request. Uh, not exactly fulfilled. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and see you next time.